Good evening to all our guests. I'm very happy to welcome here Kadri Simpson, the European Commissioner for Energy. And uh, it's unfortunate that we could not have you in Delphi in person earlier this year, but we thank you for making the time to come and talk to us about the uh, Green Deal and energy priorities now in the post-COVID era. As you know, and uh, we met a couple of times uh, uh, before the COVID crisis, this uh, government is uh, uh, has a very um, pro-growth, pro-reform agenda, which is uh, built around uh, decarbonization of our economy. Uh, the green agenda is at the center of our policies, and we are committed uh, post-COVID to accelerate rather than uh, uh, postpone, you know, the transition of our energy system, the transformation of our environmental policies. So, uh, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, 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 Kadri Simpson. And um, I mean, the European Commission has uh, presented a very ambitious proposal now for a recovery and resilience plan, uh, who comes on a, in addition on top of the MFF uh, proposals, which are also front loaded. So it would be good if you could tell us uh, uh, what is the role of the Green Deal and the Green Policies in this uh, uh, package that you have proposed and uh, we all hope that it will go through and survive the European Council and Parliament negotiations, uh, survive it and come out stronger. Yes, thank you and good afternoon. And uh, it is a pleasure to discuss um, our recovery package with you. So I also regret that uh, I missed a chance to well, visit the uh, Delphi site, but uh, let's hope that uh, not in very far f new future it will be possible again. And uh, let me start by saying that um, it was from our point of view, from energy point of view, significant that despite of the unprecedented crisis, our energy system um, all across the Europe um, has proven to be resilient. And this is um, only because of the good preparedness of the sector. And it is also very important to stay vigilant. So um, we know that right now we are entering to the phase where uh, member states are lifting their containment measures and um, it is important to ensure that the energy systems are ready to to them um, to start accommodating again um, an increasing demand both in medium term and long term and um, and um, in this context um, the broader context our main concern is um, to to ensure that uh, all across Europe, in all the regions, all the member states, uh, we will uh, we will have a uh, quick recovery from this Corona crisis. And I know that um, Greece government has firmly committed to the pro growth agenda. So this is something uh, similar that uh, now Commission proposes. As you know, already in the beginning of this year, we proposed Green Deal, and this was meant not only to secure our climate goals, but uh, it was. Um, meant as a European growth strategy. And uh, despite of the COVID crisis, the Commission uh, long-term priorities have not changed. So the green transition, um, along with the digital transition, is core of the recovery package. And, uh, and this will play an important role um, in our uh, proposed instruments. Um, um, we will unlock um, necessary investments in energy efficiency and building renovation and also for renewable energy and its uh, supply chain. Um, and also we will unlock the necessary investments for the future technologies, for example, uh, green hydrogen. And, and um, as you know, um, we made a new proposal for the multi-annual financial framework. This is total 1.1 trillion. And addition to that, there is a next generation EU funds, 750 billion. And why we call it next generation? Because those funds um, help us not only to recover from current crisis, but invest to the future and invest to the new technologies that will uh, boost our competitiveness all across Europe. So um, I think that the biggest part of this uh, next generation EU, EU um, the um, recovery and resilience fund and facility uh, that will support investments and reforms um, um, for sustainable recovery 
and under this uh, new facility the member states um, all the member states will actually uh, design their national recovery plans based on um, green goals and digital transition and um, and for me it is very important also that we will assess those plans uh, also against the national energy and climate plans because uh, we are not starting from the beginning all the governments have done a great job and proposing what they can do to achieve higher energy efficiency goals and uh, how to well accommodate more renewables uh, the um, um, uh, plan current plans are made uh, to meet the goals uh, for the year 2030 and now we will help um, with additional funds um, all the member states to to do what they planned before the COVID crisis. Good. Putting the national energy and climate plans at the center of its assessment, it's good for us, I think, because we will mark uh, high marks in that exercise. But uh, as part of our uh, effort and reform, we have, uh, uh, let's say, decided to close down our um, uh, lignite power plants uh, very fast. All operating lignite plants will close down by 2023. And the one that will come into operation in 2022 will only close down, also close down in 2028. So we are particularly uh, happy to see that in the new commission proposals, you have boosted also the Just Transition Fund, the European Just Transition Mechanism. This is important for us because uh, so far there was no bonus for fast closure. And we believe that increasing these funds now, we can uh, help the local communities overcome the problems. What is the, in your view, what are the main benefits? How can we integrate this new funding into the energy transition uh, for Greece and for all the other countries that still have coal? That's very true that uh, here in Europe, uh, well, uh, member states have different starting positions and not, um, there are several member states who are still uh, um, mine uh, fossil fuels, um, solid fossil fuels, and, uh, and uh, who do have um, regions who, who have been dependent on this uh, um, sector for decades. So our aim is, uh, to secure that no region is not left behind because of our green transition. Um, so uh, we do welcome that uh, Greece has announced a, a very ambitious plan to phase out its lignite. And, uh, and um, most probably right now when I have all the national energy and climate plans except one, um, I can say that uh, Greece um, has made one of the most ambitious uh, uh, document um, and you do have regions um, that uh, that will face big challenges so western macedonia um, the main uh, coal region uh, in in greece um, will is already facing uh, the challenges of unemployment so from this perspective, we wanted to uh, secure um, sufficient financing, and we call it the Just Transition Fund, so that uh, we can support both the people who are and their families who have been so far employed uh, by the uh, by the sector, but at the same time, we want to also uh, give a security to the consumers, so that after phasing out uh, local um, fossil fuels. Um, the, um, the electricity demand will be secured and the price will be affordable. So, um, so this uh, Just Transition Fund is uh, dedicated for both, for, uh, for um, um, creating new jobs for the mining uh, sector workers, but also investing into um, alternative uh, energy sources. Um, this just transition fund, as you as you mentioned, um, according to our initial proposal, was meant to be 7.5 billion, but now we significantly increased it, and it will be 40 billion. And uh, if I'm talking about um, uh, what it brings to Greece, then 
according to our initial proposal, um, um, there were dedicated funds uh, for Greece uh, worth of 294 million euros. But now, according to the, the current uh, proposal, and I, I truly hope that the heads of governments and European uh, Parliament will uh, approve it, According to the current proposal, the figure will be now 1.7 billion euros. So this is a significant uh, amount, and uh, you can uh, you can use it uh, only for those specific regions that are heavily uh, infected, and uh, and um, and as I told, you can use it for reskilling the workers or helping SMEs to create jobs in those specific regions. But, uh, but of course, uh, also for uh, overall diversification of economic activity and especially investing into green, um, um, green alternatives. So in addition to that, you can also use cohesion funds and, and of course, for necessary energy investments. Um, also in the next MFF, there will be um, Connecting Europe facility that helps to, uh, to create better existing energy markets and to um, uh, build uh, interconnectors uh, with your closest neighbors. That is great news. We are already building, uh, preparing our recovery plan and we are preparing our uh, master plan for the transition. So it is important for Greece that the new instruments provide the funding to Greece quickly. So hitting the ground, uh, uh, the time is very short to the digitalization that we need to be able to use the resources uh, fast and we are preparing for that. Now, as we move towards uh, uh, an a more electrified and clean system, uh, there are still some challenges for us. Uh, uh, we are the last country that has not, uh, let's say, um, uh, upgraded its electricity market. The target model is not uh, working. It is now after a lot of effort it is within reach, it will go live uh, in September. Uh, but uh, can you tell us how uh, do you see the, the importance of markets in electricity? Why is it so important that all countries uh, move fast in the uh, you know, using of electricity markets and the uh, implementation of the target model? Well, um... If we are talking about uh, our main goal that uh, Europe will become the first uh, climate neutral continent by 2050, then that means that we have to um, uh, use more, more electricity and more renewables. And for that, we need a well-functioning uh, electricity market. And we need bigger markets, regional markets, uh, uh, because bigger markets will accommodate uh, better renewables better. And, uh, and I'm... I am very well aware of the efforts uh, that your government um, and the actors are involved in. And despite of the challenges of the pandemic um, outbreak, uh, I, I also know that uh, there was a technical workshop with all relevant stakeholders and our experts uh, took place. Uh, uh, this took place in March. And uh, thank you for organizing this. So reforming the electricity market um, by the agreed deadline um, should remain a priority for Greece because as you, as you yourself mentioned, you are the last uh, member state who is, do, who is doing that. And redesigning the electricity market in Greece, um, this is also a legal requirement for comp uh, complying with the EU electricity target model. So this is not something that uh, you, uh, you made you this is a must and uh, and um, the rest of the europe has done so already so um what it uh, what it uh, gives to you well uh, the new local market design um will allow greece to help complete our pan eu market coupling so during the last two years greece has made um, significant steps forward and I wish you all the success to, to finalize it. So, so understandable that uh, COVID lockdown measures uh, postponed targets a little bit, but, uh, but um, now, now it's time to, well, to do what, what is promised and what we are expecting from you. 
just a little bit. We have been uh, working uh, all the Hellenic exchange and the IPTO have been uh, working full time and the market participants. So we need to work with the commission to make it uh, operational. And uh, a lot of what we have discussed requires investment. So hydrogen, is it at the center of the new uh, sector coupling strategy? Can you tell us a couple of works before we resume? We have a few minutes left. I will uh, use my last uh, minutes to, well, uh, to explain what will be the next initiative from our side. So uh, after two weeks, we will propose energy system integration uh, strategy and also this will be accompanied by hydrogen strategy. And why, why we are doing so? Because we don't want to, well, uh, we don't want to continue in si si silos. We want to use um, uh, electricity, even if it is right now wasted. So waste heat from uh, industry, from data centers, we can use them actually for heating purposes. Um, we need more electrification, uh, not only uh, in energy field and heating and cooling, but also in transport and industry. So this uh, strategy will accommodate all those um, uh, interactions. And well, this is true that there are some sectors where you can't use electricity or it's, um, it's too difficult. Uh, but we need, um, we need a clean energy for these sectors too. Well, mainly heavy duty vehicles and in transport sector or steel or cement industry. And for that, we are proposing hydrogen um, technology that is existing already, but it is um, too expensive right now so that uh, steel uh, makers uh, well, they can't compete with the ones who are using uh, old-fashioned uh, fossil fuels. So um, uh, um, one of our tasks is to create a market demand because if the volumes are bigger, then price comes down. And, uh, and clean hydrogen definitely helps us to achieve our climate neutrality target. We will uh, follow and we will create the enabling uh, framework for hydrogen, but at the same time, we will push a lot of renewables uh, in the short term. They are cheaper for the transition and we will uh, work with the Commission and uh, to build up the necessary infrastructure so that hydrogen can be um, uh, the complement to our renewable strategy. Thank you very much, Kadri. I hope to see you in Delphi and in Athens and in Greece soon. And if you're interested also in will take you to uh, Western Macedonia and uh, Peloponnese to visit the Lignite power plants. Thank you. Thank you. I hope to meet you soon in Greece. Thank you. Thanks to all our, to all our guests. Mm -hmm.